الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد the importance of following the methodology of the salaf upon knowledge so imam fozan and this is the second lecture in the series mentioned the importance of following the methodology of the salaf upon ilm and uh, upon knowledge because anything we practice in islam must be based upon ilm the one who has the more fadl the more benefit is the one who practices based upon knowledge not based upon just blind following people or based upon ignorance of their own guessing because they will make more mistakes they will fall into bidah they will fall into uh, other practices that are not from islam if they don't do it based on ilm wa fiqh the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, من سلك طريقا يلتمسه به علم سهل الله له طريقا الى الجنه whoever traverses the path of knowledge is traversing the path of jannah allah will make easy for them the path of jannah so that lets us know that the sabil al mu'minin is based on ilm and the sabil al salaf al salih is based upon ilm Allah the Almighty says wa sabaqun al awwalun min al muhajirin wal ansar wal ladina tabahum bi ihsan and the first to embrace Islam from the muhajirun and the ansar and also those who follow them exactly in iman that means those who came after the salaf al-saleh and who follow them who follow them exactly in their understanding of Islam and in their practice of Islam that that's, that's what they're striving to follow uh, the imam said meaning they follow them with perfection It is not possible to follow them in a perfect manner except after learning their methodology and what they were upon. As for merely ascribing to the salaf and salafia without knowledge of this methodology, this has no basis. In fact, it can be pos- it can possibly bring about harm, and thus it is mandatory that one has knowledge of the way of the salaf asali. Subhanallah, that statement should be sufficient for us, but it seems like it's not sufficient for many of the people who even claim salafia and who even claim to take knowledge from this great imam imam uh, saleh bin fozan because they don't want to seek knowledge at all they don't want to better themselves when you advise them about the way to seek knowledge that it isn't just listening to lectures about iman and and this and this and this but rather it's studying the books it's going into books this is one of the reasons why we started our series of lectures in nawaqid al-islam i want us to finish that we're starting from the beginning and we're going to finish that series and that way it gives us some ilm because we studied books of uh those who came before us who are in the sabil al-mu'minin those who were adhering to the salafi minhaj and this is why it's important to study and benefit and practice consequently this nation constantly studied and taught the way of the salaf al and they passed it on generation after generation this methodology was taught in the masajid in in the mosque in schools in institutes colleges and universities this is the way of the salaf al and this is the way to learn about it we learn the pure way of the salaf which is taken from the book of allah and the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed that many differences would occur in this nation when he said افترقت اليهود على 72 فرقه وافترقت النصارى على 72 فرقه وستفترق هذه الامه على 73 فرقه كلها في النار الواحده كلنا من هي يا رسول الله قال من كان على مثل ما كان عليه واصحابي اليوم the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the jews were breaking the 71 sects the christians in the 72 sects my ummah in the 73 sects all of them in the fire except one they said who are they ya rasulullah he said those who are upon what i'm upon and my companions or kama qala nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wasallam upon hearing this the companions asked which group will not enter the fire o messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he sallallahu alayhi wasallam replied those who are upon what i am uh, what i am upon and my companions are upon today so that lets us know that that's the sabil al mu'minin the, uh, the the manhaj of the salaf al is an obligation for us to follow and it's an obligation that we have knowledge of it because you can't follow something properly without knowledge you can't pro- follow it properly without knowledge and as something the, the imam mentioned reminds me of the fiqh uh, principle that we've mentioned countless times or a qaida diniyah it's a, a religious principle which is al ibra bi haqaiq laysa bi musammiyat that the proof of something the reality of something is in its substance not in its name So someone can claim yes I'm Salafi. She says she is Salafi. This one says they are Salafi. 
But yet, that's a claim. They may follow Hizbiya. They make they may make takfir of everyone, so they're actually a takfiri. They may make tibdi of everyone, so they're actually following a minhaj of, of some of the Hizbis. They may follow the minhaj and methodology of Akhwana Muslimin and implement their principles. They may follow the uh, go on the madhab or the the, the, the way of Jamaat Tablik and their form of da'wah. So that shows that they're not following the path of the Salaf Asari. So this shows the Sahabat Tifila that uh, that this is a path of ilm and practice and it's not sufficient to just have a name and claim that you are Salafi he said this is the methodology of the Salaf Asada. it is what the Prophet Sallallahu companions are upon and those who follow them with good the present situation mandates that one knows the way of the Salaf Asada in order to adhere to it because it is the path of salvation all of the other paths and groups will be in the hellfire except one this is the safe sect they are Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah only one group will be saved which is the group that once the people became divided the paths become numerous. The groups and ways multiply. This is the group that will be upon the way of the Salaf Asale. This warrants that the person holds tight to it and is patient upon it until he meets the Lord of his religion, the sublime and high. So that shows us a Tifillah. It's a patient path. It's a patient path. And this, uh, all of this is, uh, if we look at in uh, Asul Thalatha, the book uh, Asul Thalatha by uh, Imam Muhammad ibn al-Dawhab, in the beginning of his treatise, he said, اعلم رحمك الله انه يجب علينا تعلم اربع مسائل الاولى العلم وهو معرفة الله ومعرفة النبي ومعرفة الدين الاسلام بيدله الثانية العمل به الثالث الدعوة اليه الرابع الصبر على اذى فيه he said know and may Allah have mercy upon you that verily there are four things every Muslim must know the first thing is knowing Allah knowing his messenger uh, and knowing the deen, the religion of Islam with its textual proofs and knowing the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second thing is practicing that knowledge. The third thing is uh, calling to that knowledge. And the fourth thing is patience upon the harm that comes with that. That is the minhaj of the salaf right there. That is, the, uh, that is what they were upon and that is what is required of us to have success. Is following that same minhaj and being patient upon it when people are trying to harm you, when people are slandering you, people are belittling you, people are making tibdiyah you, people are making takfir of you, people are attacking you, maybe physically. That that's the Sabila Mu'mineen. And it's a patient path. And it's a and it's the patient path of Da'wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the minhaj is and was Sabila Mu'mineen. This is so you may fear the fire and deviation. You must oppose the deviant sects and tread the path that is safe in order that you may meet your Prophet وسلم, his companions, and those who follow them. The person who adheres to this path, especially in the latter days, he will be harassed by the people and those who oppose this path. He will be harmed and threatened by them, and thus he must be patient. He will be approached with desires in order to divert him from the path, and he will be threatened with good and bad by way of the deviant groups and methodologies. Thus, this person needs patience. It is because of this the Prophet he was Salama said Beda Islam Gariban was so you would do Gariban come a better for to be little or about the Prophet Salahu Alehi was Salam said Islam began as something strange and it will once again become something strange so to be for the glad tidings uh, for the strangers meaning give glad tidings to the strangers why the strangers are those who are really adhering to the book of Allah and the son of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the men heads of the Salaf Asali and they will seem strange because they're few in numbers and we have alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah we have Ahl Sunnah all over the world Ahl Sunnah is all over the world you'll find groups amongst them trying to strive to adhere to Kitabullah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Minhaj of the Salaf al and, and, and striving however they're few and they're strange in most societies, in Muslim and non-Muslim societies. So it requires patience. And as the Sheikh mentioned, that they're harassed on two fronts. They're harassed by, uh, of course, fellow believers and, and, and the people of uh, Bid'ah. And they're also harassed by, of course, the non-Muslims. And they're also harassed, the second way, is with the, is by desires. Being attacked uh, from your own desires. 
through shahwat, through uh, being invited to, to, to adultery, being uh, invited to involved in things which are haram. Uh, maybe financially, maybe it's to be invited to riba, that, you know, being enticed by riba to compromise your dawah, to compromise what you're doing and take out a bank loan so that way you can believe that you're going to further uh, do strive in the in the manner that you're trying to do. So all of these things are tests for Ahli Iman and tests for those following the Sabila Salaf Asari. The companions asked, who are the strangers, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He replied, they are those who are upright while the people are corrupt. In a similar narration, he replied, those who rectify what the people have corrupted. Consequently, nothing can save one from deviation in this life, nor from the fire in the next life, except adhering to this path, the path of the Salaf Asari. They are those whom Allah said concerning them and whoso obeys Allah and the Messenger وسلم, then they will be in the company of those on whom Allah has bestowed his grace of the prophets the Siddiqeen uh, the martyrs and the righteous so that is the Sabila Mu'mineen and it's a patient path and it's not an easy path and how excellent those companions are. Such is the bounty from Allah, and Allah is sufficient as an all-knower. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of the, the struggles we face, and the trials and tribulations, and He will test the believers. But those who are successful will adhere to the minhaj of the Salaf regardless. They will strive their utmost to continue to adhere to that minhaj. Don't give up that minhaj. Adhere to it. But you have to have knowledge so you know what you're adhering to, so that you know you're in the uh, minhaj of the uh, Salaf Asali, and that you know what the minhaj of the Salaf Asali is. It is because of this, Allah made it mandatory that we recite Surah Al-Fatiha in every unit of prayer. Whether this prayer is mandatory or optional, there is a tremendous supplication toward the end of the Surah. Ihdina Surat Al-Mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. It is the straight path because indeed there are other paths which are deviant and deceiving. Thus the person asks Allah to protect him from those deviant paths and he asks that he be guided to the straight path. This means the one that one requests to be guided to the straight path and that he remains firm upon it. He makes a supplication in every unit of prayer because of his extreme importance. Ihdina Surat Al-Mustaqim. Allah, please guide us to the straight path. Uh, who are those who traverse upon the straight path? They are those whom Allah has, has blessed has blessed surat al ladina an amta alayhim the path of those whom you've blessed who are those whom Allah has blessed min al nabiyin wa siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin wa hasanu wa and the prophets, the Siddiqeen, the followers of the prophets, uh, the, the martyrs and the righteous, how excellent these companions are. So those are the, that's the path, those are the people who are following it. If you ask Allah to guide you to this path, this indicates that you have requested to be protected from the deviant path and those who have gone astray. Surat al-Ladina an amta alayhim, ghayr al-maqdubi alayhim, waladhalleen. The path of those whom you've blessed, not the path of those who earned your anger, nor of those who went astray. Nor the path of those who earned your anger. Those who Allah is angry with are the Jews. They are those who knew the truth, but they did not act upon it. The anger of Allah is also upon those who traverse the path of the Jews from this nation. Thus everyone who knows the truth, but does not act accordingly, is upon the path of the Jews, the path of those whom Allah is angry with, due to him not implementing knowledge of the truth. This person is in fact taken the knowledge but abandoned the actions and thus every person who, is a, who has knowledge but does not act upon it incurs the anger of Allah and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.